it's Monday. It's August 29th. And the word of the day is musaceous, meaning of or related to the fruit of tropical tree-like plants of the banana family, especially bananas and plantains. Used in a sentence, if you told Ray Comfort how musaceous he was, he'd know it was an insult, but he wouldn't know which one. <laughs> yeah, no offense to whoever made up that word, but we kind of already had looks like a dick in the vocabulary, so right. it seemed like you were doubling your work. Really, honestly, <laughs> didn't need a synonym. I'm no illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick, and broadcasting delayed. From America's far center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, we finally have a story about mysterious bones in somebody's yard that doesn't involve Catholic schools. Donald Trump is deeply confused about how the FBI can have a David. And we'll talk about later cheese of the green variety. But first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight is fellow skeptocrat Eli Bosnick. Eli, if the FBI raided your estate, what kind of documents would they be looking for, you think? Mm, probably the scripts for all the lines you beep, Noah. Oh, no, yeah, that tracks. Good answer. <laughs> In our lead story tonight, Arizona seems to be the latest senatorial race that the GOP has effectively given up on. We learned last week that the Senate Republicans' main super PAC is canceling about $8 million in planned ad buys for the campaign, leaving GOP hopeful Blake Masters all that much less hopeful in a race that he's already trailing by eight points in the polls in. Jesus! His opponent, former astronaut and husband of Gabby Giffords, Mark Kelly, already won the seat in a special election two years ago, but even with incumbency, national name recognition, and a huge financial advantage even before this cancellation, his biggest advantage in the race still seems to be what an absolute ball of pigeon shit Blake Masters is. <laughs> yeah, don't get me wrong, space is cool, but the alternative is a guy Gollum would call the cops on if he lingered too long outside his cave, so... <laughs> This one's an easy yes. one. Right. So no surprise, Masters sailed the victory in the primary under the wing of a Trump endorsement, uh, which he no doubt earned for no reason but his advocacy for Trump's 2020 election snit. But using the tried and true Internet euphemism of if he advocates for Trump election lies, there's probably an old live journal blog somewhere where he blames the Jews for the sinking of the Lusitania and sources his opinion with liberal quotes from Nazis. Opposition research had a field day with this motherfucker because, <laughs> yeah, all of that. And, it, and even though he assures us that Nazism was really just a phase that he went through in college, like be an emo or pretending to like silent movies, the majority of Arizona voters don't seem to be buying it. Yeah, how could anyone think he still supports fascism just because his first public act as a politician was to advocate for the overturn of a democratic right. election? Now, I, I don't, I don't want to imply that all of his politically radioactive views are confined to the past. Uh, when asked about gun violence on a talk show, he admitted it was a problem but said absolutely real and unembellished quote this is quote, so crazy it's people in chicago st louis shooting each other very often you know black people frankly Yikes. <laughs> and the democrats don't want to do anything about that and real quote okay here's the thing i cannot say for certain whether the that in that sentence is inner city gun violence or black people All right <laughs> now of course Masters is far from the only primary victor uh, that we've seen the GOP super PAC running in terror from. Uh, they've got a finite amount of money, of course, far more finite than the Democrats, it turns out. And they obviously are hesitant to throw it away on races where they don't stand a chance. Uh, now, they, they still kind of have to invest something in those races, right? Or they'll risk pissing off the local donors. Plus, there's always an off chance that some shitty candidate wins and they don't want to have burned that bridge altogether. So they still have to waste some money in states like Arizona. But we've been watching for weeks now as they steadily roll back planned ad buys across the fucking country. Even before this announcement, we learned that the National Republican Senatorial Committee had cut about $13.5 million in ad buys just in the first half of August. Uh, what if you Fellas, do a racist only spaghetti dinner or yeah. something. Sort of help us. <laughs> a pancake. Help us out here. <laughs> pancake. Those are cheap. And, and look, it's not like it's unusual for a super PAC to pull ads in a race that doesn't seem to be going their way. But like for the NRSC to be pulling this amount of money this early in the game is unprecedented. The PAC is, of course, lying about the reasons and pretending that this is all part of some new media plan they've got going. Uh, uh, according to a spokesman for the group, quote, we've been creative in how we're spending our money. 
finger paints. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but he assures Republican donors that, quote, nothing has changed about our commitment to winning all our target states, end quote. Of course, that lie was undercut by none other than sentient turkey neck Mitch McConnell, who admitted earlier this month that the GOP was unlikely to take control of the Senate and that, quote, candidate quality had a lot to do with the outcome, end quote. Yeah, we're looking more for Bond villains. We're getting a lot of Spawn villains this year. <laughs> we are um, we're one of the major political parties in the country. That's, That's sad. Um, That's yeah. sad. Uh, but, like, look, as bad as Blake Masters is, he's not the worst candidate that Trump's capricious bullshit endorsements have them saddled with. In Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. of course, you have... Fucking Dr. Oz Cruda taking a beating because he can't stop responding with what every time John Fetterman says out of touch elitist carpetbagger says what? Right. <laughs> His recent gaffes include understating the number of homes that he owned by 400 percent and trying to humanize himself with the most awkward video taken at a grocery store since the cucumber scene in Animal House. So he's down by nine points and counting. Yeah. Imagine your best chance at a swing state being Oprah's bad medical advice guy and him somehow blowing it further than yeah. that. Well, but the sad thing for them, at least, is that he was not their best chance by a long <laughs> shot. Um, and though their races are much tighter, you've also got to add to this list venture capitalist and author J.D. Vance, who often manages a better sexist phrase per minute average than the intro to This Week in Misogyny. Uh, he's down in Ohio. And of course, my personal favorite, the absolute epitome of big, dumb football player Herschel Walker in Georgia, Woo-hoo! who's trailing by a couple of points according to the 538's polling average. His gaffe so far in the campaign could be a goddamn episode right (laughs) he accused china of stealing our good air and replacing it with their bad air he responded to the uvalde shootings by calling for a quote department that can look at young men that's looking at women that's looking at social media end quote sick (laughs) he said he had a quote dry mist Mm -hmm. end quote that could cure covid at the end for fuck's sake he literally did the full-on then why are there still monkeys thing when talking about evolution. Yeah. Also, he has claimed that he has multiple personality disorder just like Jesus. Exactly. Well, sort of. So, yeah. the, the Republicans might as well be running their talking points through Google Translate a few times and then just tweeting them out. <laughs> Random <laughs> word generator 2022. So, yeah, in a midterm where the Republicans should, by all historical precedent, wipe the fucking floor with their Democratic opponents, it's looking more and more like the Democrats may maintain or even broaden their lead in the Senate. And keep in mind that these shit candidates are coming on top of overturning Roe, the continued revelation of GOP complicity in Trump's coup attempt, and the passing of the most ambitious climate bill in the nation's history by the Democrats. So, you know, keep your hopes high, just not high enough to think that we can afford for you to sit this one out is all. Exactly. And on that obligatory reminder that compulsory voting would, if nothing else, leave us more time for jokes, we'll pause for a word from this week's first sponsor, Policy Genius. Come on, come on, there's got to be something. Eli, why are you digging through Heath's room while he's on vacation? I just want to see what he left us. Left us? Why would he leave us anything? Psh, this many years talking about our sponsor this week, Policy Genius? He knows how important it is to leave something behind for your loved ones. Wait, what's... Policy Genius. Policy Genius is an insurance marketplace that makes it easy to compare quotes from top companies like AIG and Prudential in one place to find your lowest price on life insurance. You could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. Options start at just $17 per month for $500,000 of coverage. Wow, that's great. But I don't know, Eli. Is is now the right time to get life insurance? It sure is. Inflation is driving up prices for just about everything lately. But life insurance rates are actually down from this time last year. And since life insurance typically gets more expensive as you age, that means now is a great time to buy. Just click the link in the description or head to PolicyGenius.com to get personalized quotes in minutes and find the right policy for your needs. The licensed agents at Policy Genius work for you, not the insurance companies. They're on hand through the entire process to help you understand your options so you can make decisions with confidence. Nice. Uh, remind me where I go again? Just head to PolicyGenius.com to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. Ooh, there it is. I knew it. He left us a note. Milk, eggs, and butter. I wonder what it means. Eli, I'm pretty sure that's... You know what? It's, uh, it's probably a treasure map. I knew it! 
Th- this sketch doesn't work because it presumes Heath would own multiple objects. Yeah, no, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back. Next up in headlines in Oh, Those Nuclear Codes News. <laughs> Have you ever seen a guy screaming at and punching a vending machine only to realize he hasn't pushed the button? That <laughs> glorious moment of transition of white hot rage to humbled candy acceptance. That's kind of what the Republican Party is doing as slowly, piece by piece, they realize that their boy done fucked up big time when he took a lot more than post-it notes from the White House on its way out. Yeah. No, I like I know that the word excuse doesn't normally need an opposite, but Trump is going to force us to neologize in cuse one of these days, <laughs> right? Yeah, so this political mumble grumble, let's talk about student debt instead, is apropos of the release of the affidavit released by the FBI this week that was used as cause for their warrant and search of Mar-a-Lago. And while CNN has an excellent annotated version, while we wait for our friends over at the opening argument podcast to break it down, the long and short of it is that when someone huffily thumps 15 boxes of government secrets down in front of you that they finally got from the closet at their golf club, you should probably double check to make sure there aren't any top secret files missing. And dumb as they may be. Republicans tend to agree with that sentiment. But, right, yeah, because apparently not wanting to get nuked is the last remaining commonality between Trump, the GOP, and the rest of us. Yeah, some of them. Some well, of them. no, sorry, not <laughs> Trump, sorry. Just the just, just GOP and the rest of us. Yeah, and, and I want to be clear here, don't get me wrong, Trumpism isn't so confined by reality that there still aren't obstinate defenders. Uh, Republican governor of Virginia, Glenn Youngkin, took to Fox News to say, quote, I would just caution folks not to draw too many conclusions. <laughs> well, no, the, that's probably good advice in general if you want to keep people Republican. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And my favorite comes from former acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney, who took to Twitter to say, quote, it appears this raid was, in fact, just about documents, as even some on the left have opined. That is simply outrageous. End quote. <laughs> I mean, you didn't exactly say they didn't even find the orphan sex slaves in the basement, Mick, but you you kind of implied it, right? Yeah, what is he think? Oh, t- no, he <laughs> took the new. You guys said he took the nuclear football with him, and you just checked now. <laughs> but perhaps... No reaction is more telling than the advice to Donald Trump told out by former advisor to George W. Bush and current war criminal Karl Rove on Fox News this week, who said, quote, let the election conversation get back to what it ought to be about, which is about inflation and the economy and the direction of the country and people's views of President Biden's competence, end quote. Not adding, holy shit, did you guys see 538? Why did we overturn <laughs> Roe versus Wade? Yeah. Oh, fuck. We have his chances in 2016 of losing Congress right now. Fuck. Woof. (laughs) And in putting the bull back in mobile news. In a world where a lame duck president conspired with a pillow maker to take over the government, there's no realistic assumption of normalcy. Thus, no news item can any longer be inherently weird. Right? What what expectation would you be measuring that against? That being said. It's fair. There was a time in the very recent past when a story about a startup mobile phone company taking over school boards in an effort to install national theocracy would have been a weird fucking headline. So, of course, it's perfectly at home in the news sites of 2022. Honestly, the fact that my pillow doesn't have stormtroopers patrolling several small cities in your state already, it's a surprise <laughs> to me. It's a surprise. It's a right. refreshing surprise. Yeah. So, yeah, so if you listen to our sister show, The Scathing Atheist, you'll have heard about uh, a couple of fucked up stories over the last couple of weeks out of Texas school boards. One is a school district that earned the wrath of Chaz Stevens over their In God We Trust poster requirement and got a bunch of In God We Trust posters written in Arabic in response. Uh, The other is the now notorious case where a school board banned a graphic adaptation of the uh, diary of Anne fucking Frank for being too woke. Well, It turns out that we've got one entity to thank for both of those egregious moves, and that entity is Patriot Mobile. Or more specifically, Patriot Mobile Action, the political action committee spun off from the phone company to heed Steve Bannon's call to take over school boards all over the country. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Meanwhile, we're begging our side to vote to keep the last of their bodily autonomy in place. Are we sure we don't want to be the bad guys? They take instruction well. I don't know that we're... 
sure of that. So, <laughs> yeah, th- this weird ass mobile company that bills itself as quote America's only Christian conservative wireless provider end quote. I mean, sure. <laughs> yeah, right. Dumped the whopping six hundred thousand dollars into local school board races, and that eleven of them, eleven school board races. That's over fifty four grand per race, and we're talking about fucking school board races. So, right, the, like the budget is normally whatever you can talk your kids into crafting with you between now and the election, right? The overwhelming majority of these candidates spend five grand or less on their entire campaign. So needless to say, with one donor spending in an order of magnitude more, all 11 of their candidates won. And, and that's led to multiple acts that are so egregious, even by the standard of Texas fucking school boards, that they've won mention on our shows. Yeah, how do you even spend $54,000 on school board elections? I don't know! You said ACDC playing on the front lawn of the <laughs> high school? Brown, <laughs> make Dave Coolridge one of your three of six confusing choices! <laughs> 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 So yeah, sorry if this comes off as alarmist, but a bunch of well-armed, well-funded religious zealots are doing battle against imaginary demons and the battleground they've chosen is America's public schools. Okay? That's what's actually happening. Their chosen weapon is ignorance and they're trying to unleash it on American children because they've realized that the greatest barrier between the present moment and the realization of their future vision is people knowing things that are true. Mm -hmm. And they're determined to do something about it. So, you know... I, I matters where you get your cell service, I guess, is the point. <laughs> yeah, if any of you just like saw the prices and signed up, please don't. Please yeah. stop. <laughs> well, I need a minute to check that Mint Mobile isn't short for the cult of Mithridatism or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Eli does that. We're going to pause for a word from this week's other sponsor, BetterHelp. Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. It's just that I always write about it when he's gone, and when I miss shows, he acts like I don't exist anymore. Hey, Eli. What you doing? Oh, hey, no, I was just messaging with my therapist. Messaging your therapist? Is that a hostage situation? Because those are usually a three-hander. No, no hostages this time, Noah. I'm just using BetterHelp. What's BetterHelp? BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat-only therapy sessions. So you don't have to see or talk to anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's affordable, financial aid is available, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. A therapist that I can do chat-only sessions with if I want to? That's right. Plus, our listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Skeptocrat. That's BetterHelp.com slash Skeptocrat. All right. Well, I'll check that out. Just just uh, one thing. What's that? Uh, that is an empty phone case. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, why do you think I need the therapy? Oh, okay. Yeah. And we're back. Next up in headlines in I Know What I Dino Saw... No. Oh, Jesus Christ, yeah. <laughs> In a story that should put a gleam in the eye of every nine-year-old whose mom ever told them to leave the backyard alone, the skeleton of a massive dinosaur was discovered in a man's backyard in Pombal, Portugal, and it could be the largest ever found in Europe. Yeah, and I, I know what you're thinking, listeners, but um, ever since Brexit, the British monarchy is no longer eligible for the title of Europe's biggest dinosaur. That's so, true, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I have to so, give it to somebody else. This story actually dates back to 2017 when the property owner luckily noticed bone fragments while doing construction on his property. He contacted a research team who checked and they were like, yeah, man, sorry, that pool's going to have to wait. You have a huge ass, almost complete dinosaur in your backyard. <laughs> <laughs> and earlier this month, the teams finally got to do a full dinosaur yeah. explorey what, what? dusty <laughs> thing i don't know what those are called anyways they discovered the again <laughs> largely intact skeleton of a sauropod or as the plebes like you and i would call it to send dinosaur nerds into fits a brontosaurus that's not but yeah I, just, I might as well just call loki a fucking panther what's the fucking difference <laughs> it's just exactly gotta get my tweets in so whatever it's called uh measures it measures about 39 feet tall and 82 feet long Jesus Christ. and as i teased at the beginning gives all signs of being the largest skeleton discovered on the continent and let me say here the size actually isn't the coolest thing about it. The level of intact in a specimen like this will lead to incredible new discoveries and confirmed theories about 
dinosaurologists that they've had for years. Mm -hmm. Um, Dare I say, this discovery might even settle the famous Brontosaurus battle once and for all. It will not do that. It's a brachiosaur. No, it won't. But that was a good end to the story. Well, yeah, man, lies would be good ends to a lot of stories. Right? Same page. I miss Heath. <laughs> <laughs> and in my rocket is lunar than yours news tonight. Oh, yeah. If all goes to plan, about an hour and a half after this episode debuts, NASA is going to be launching the behemoth Artemis One rocket to the moon. The rocket completed its flight readiness review last Monday and was deemed good to fly by the same guys that okayed the Challenger launch. <laughs> but I, I'm pretty sure they they check better now. But still, if the Artemis One launches successfully, it'll do so as the most powerful rocket Earth has ever hurled into space, beating the Saturn V by over a million pounds of thrust. And yes, that is every bit as sexy as you thought it was when I said it. The, the launch is expected to bring over 100,000 spectators to Cape Canaveral because A... They're throwing a 32-story tall, 6 million pound building into the air with explosions, and who the fuck would want to see that? And B, opportunities to watch smart people do stuff in Florida are getting scarcer by the minute. They sure are. I, I really want them to troll Florida, just seven, six, by the way, the spaceship is gay, five, four, three, two, one, gotcha, yes, gay spaceship, <laughs> took off from Florida. <laughs> But yeah, this launch is the first of six planned launches in the Artemis program and is admittedly the least cool of the six by far. Still, fucking rocket is going to the fucking moon, and that's pretty fucking good. Unfortunately, there won't be any people in it. The first crewed mission is currently scheduled for 2024, and that's just a flyby. The first crewed mission that's actually going to land on the moon isn't scheduled until 2025. And let me loudly add my voice to the chorus of people saying it's about fucking time because, and this pains me to say, as of December 14th of this year, you'll have to be 50 years old to even have been alive the last time humans set foot on the moon. Think of the space nerds, people. This is like if someone hadn't made a new piece of pornography since those peep shows outside of yes. the movie theaters. Yes. They need Thank this. We got, we got high definition video now. It's just like, ah, oh, ah. Oh. And sure, the flight may be delayed and it might even go horribly wrong. But with NASA, even the massive failures look pretty fucking cool. So be sure to tune in if you have a chance. Yeah, it takes a true NASA fan to pitch the upside of the Challenger, Noah. I respect the dedication. <laughs> I respect it. Hey, my gallows humor was forged in that explosion, <laughs> Eli. There were upsides. That's true. That's true. All those kindergartners got an A that year. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> and in no fair news, on January 6th of 2020... Riley Williams, age 25, allegedly broke into the Capitol with a bunch of other domestic terrorists, assaulted officers who tried to stop her, and, perhaps most importantly, stole Nancy Pelosi's laptop. She has since been under house arrest for these crimes, but this week, a judge has granted her eight hours of freedom for a different exploration of her medieval beliefs. That's right. She's going to the Pennsylvania Renaissance Fair. <laughs> Fucking what? Okay, so you got to admit, if she dressed up as the QAnon shaman for it, like we'd have to offer begrudging. Exactly. Respect, right? Yes. So Williams, who allegedly said on the domestic terrorist Discord, "quote I took Nancy Pelosi's hard drives. I don't care. Kill me." And then added later, "Like they're gonna arrest me. They'll never take me alive." Was arrested alive <laughs> for, for the record on January 18th of 2021. Oh, it didn't take very long, yeah. No. And she has been under house arrest ever since. But like I said, this week it was determined appropriate that she get to go watch jousts or whatever. So yeah. she'll, she'll have eight hours to attend the fair and get back home. Well, okay. So to be fair to the judge, not many places where she'd be less likely to encounter a hard drive she could steal. Though. That's fair. That is fair. And look, I've, I've seen a lot of people comparing the story to how other people guilty of relatively minor crimes are treated, and that's definitely worth our consideration, but legally speaking, her charges include stuff like disorderly conduct, and entering and remaining in a restricted building, or grounds, and we we kind of want other people who do stuff like that not to be trapped in their houses unable to go anywhere. <laughs> Well, yeah, okay, but anybody who thinks stealing government documents in service of an attempted coup is a minor crime is way too influenced by the current Trump excuse cycle. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. But no, I, I reported on this story because perhaps, by chance, someone listening to this podcast is also going to the Renaissance Fair. And I'm just saying, 
If that's you and you can trick her into a pillory and take a picture, there's a <laughs> lot of Heath points in it for you. He gave me a bunch can to you? give away while he's on vacation. Oh, Trust okay. me. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> and finally tonight, in But You've Got the Twit Part Down News, <laughs> there are few ongoing stories I have reveled in more thoroughly than Trump's continued silly and failed effort to build his own Twitter with blackjack and hookers. Through every misstep, false start, SEC investigation, legal injunction, open source agreement, violation, DDoS attack, wait list, and stock plunge, I've been right there to point and snicker. It's a failure wrapped in an embarrassment inside a defeat. And believe it or not, it's still somehow getting worse for him. So I'd like to take a minute to fill you in on all the miserable failures that Truth Social has managed to add to its already impressive list uh, since the last time we talked about them. I don't know, Noah. Truth Social got to see the world premiere of the new movie Breitbart made about Hunter Biden. Like, Meta didn't even get a chance to bid on that. <laughs> no, that's true. Uh, so, yeah, you see, the company isn't making any money, and there's no reason to believe that it will ever make any money. At its launch, the app saw something like a million and a half views a day. Right. That, that's pretty unimpressive against Twitter's numbers, of course, but it's not nothing. You, you can at least keep the lights on with that kind of traffic. But according to estimates from online analytics firm SimilarWeb, that number is down to something like 300,000 per day. And that's not enough to keep the lights on, as evidenced by the fact that they're apparently no longer paying their web hosting service. Ooh. And according to Fox Business, they're now in arrears to the tune of over a million dollars with them. Ooh. So, again, to be clear, a former U.S. president is losing money on offering a free product to the half of the country that voted for him. It's genuinely hard to think of an example of similar failure that isn't also Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> right? And the greatest thing about that, by the way, is that their hosting service is a company called RightForge, which promotes itself as the alternative to the left-leaning big tech censorship of the mainstream web. And and what that means is, well, what it means is they're a bunch of jackasses that could eat dicks and I'm happy they don't have their million dollars, but it also means... <laughs> They can't just boot Trump's bullshit website for non-payment without torpedoing their core business, right? Truth Social's failure is so severe, it's fucking contagious. Yeah, it's like, oh no, please don't take a bunch of bug-eyed tech boys who learned everything about diversity from Jordan Peterson's Twitter with you. Oh no! Yeah, oh, right! No. Well, no, but it still gets worse. You'll remember Digital World Acquisitions? the special purpose acquisition company that committed to uh, take Trump media and technology group public. Uh, they're the ones whose stock probably soared when they announced this shit and has been in free fall ever since. Like, Seriously, it's down fucking 75% from its peak. They lost at least $6.5 million this year alone, and shockingly, they don't want to specially acquire his company anymore. <laughs> uh, they've filed to put that deal on indefinite hold until Truth Social can, like, Make literally a dollar. Any fucking dollar. Doesn't matter which one. <laughs> Just lie and say you're taking Girl Scout orders at the office, guys. Please, anything. <laughs> we need any income. Oh, okay. Yeah, just so, just one more reminder that no level of failure is absolute. Trump can always go lower, so no doubt I will have further updates on this story for you in the future. And on that atypically up note. We're going to close it out for the night. Thanks to Eli Bosnick and thanks to all the listeners who liked us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and send us feedback on all the other various internets. Please keep doing that. Please keep listening and please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, please feel free to send us gifts of money on our donation page at patreon.com slash skeptocrat, just like all the people that Heath will thank by name when he gets back. I don't want to cheat you out of a good Heath compliment. And whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Scathing Atheist, Scott Alpha Movies, D&D Minus, and Citation Needed, available on Apple Music, Stitcher, all the other podcast apps, or the deep web. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penis. Special thanks to Ryan Slotnick of Address on Mars. He's the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out by using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time catchphrase sign off. I was so happy to find that Mithridatism was a real word. Yeah, it means um, taking small amounts of poison. That's what um, I thought, but so I was like, man, this is a big word for you to know. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> it's me. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved.